Hello friends and happy new year. Today I'm doing knotless box braids using expressions 84 inch hair in the color 1B27. Off camera, I cut and stretch the hair out so that way it's about 41 to 44 inches long. This is a perfect length for waist length braids. Instead of cutting them into halves, you can cut them into thirds in order to get mid-back length. Yes, it takes a little extra arm work, but it can be done. I started doing knot lists because someone asked me to. It was either my best friend or my client. Before that, I was only doing regular box braids and I really had no desire to do knot list braids. I was kind of content just only doing box braids until one of them asked me to do it. And it was probably both of them and my best friend probably begged me to do it. That's usually how I start doing most, of, most styles that I offer. My best friend begs me to do a style and she won't let up until I do it. So y'all can thank her for that. <laughs>
the first time I did them, I did them on myself first. I wanted to try them on myself to see, you know, could I do this before I started offering it? It took me about 12 hours because I parted way too small. Like, they practically look like micro braids. They were cute, but they were heavy, and I almost didn't add them to my service list because of that. But then I tried again, and I got them to the perfect size, and it only took me nine hours. I needed to keep practicing in order to get that time down, because nine hours was just way too long for me. I was doing box braids, like the regular box braids, in anywhere from like three to five hours depending on you know my client's hair but nine hours for some knotless i i was not about to offer that and if i did offer it only being able to do it in nine hours it was going to be way more than what people really wanted to pay so i was like let me try to get this down i know i can eventually i got it down to about five to seven hours and that includes prepping the hair onto the rack When starting a knotless braids, you start off with three strands of your client's hair, like you would, you know, a plait, but that's essentially what knotless is. It's just a, a feed-in plait. So you start off like you're doing a plait. 
and then you just feed in hair in as you go little by little i personally like to use like three or four strands depending on how thick we're trying to get it and depending on how you separate your hair because if you separate your hair really finely you have to add more strands but if you separate them you know kind of a a medium size then you can add fewer strands of hair or you can feed in few, fewer strands of hair it's it's personal preference or or customizable based on the thickness of your client's hair that's typically what I do I try to base it on the thickness of my client's hair When it comes to parting, I started out by using the same parting pattern I would use for regular box braids because it was all I knew. Remember, I am a self-taught braider, so I'm learning as I go through the trials and errors. I customized my pattern technique to what was clean, proficient, and fast. The first several times I did this style, the parts were a little big because I was used to creating a base big enough to hold a regular box braid. So I wasn't used to sizing for knotless, which are smaller. And as I said, I parted way too small on my own head and I didn't want to do that for my clients because I was ready to take those micro knotless box braids out my head after I parted them way too small. And I didn't want my clients to feel that way. So at that point when I was in my trial and error um, era, I would rather part bigger than a part too small.
I'm very blessed to have such nice and accommodating clients that allow me to learn and practice. It's always great to give a disclaimer when you're trying something new. Allowing them to decide to take a chance on you rather than blindsiding them is good business practice. And it will also keep them coming back to you because they know they can ask you to try a style. And if you you, if you can't do it, you're going to say that you can't do it. Or I can try to do it, but just know it may not be perfect. And they can decide, okay, yeah, I'll take a chance on you or nah, I'm good. But if you just blindside everybody and it does not come out right they are going to be mad so a little disclaimer is okay it's actually great The first time I started offering Knotless, I told my clients I was new to this and not true to, to this just yet. So it may take me a little bit longer. I think when I first started offering Knotless, I, I think I put maybe eight hours just to be safe. Because even though I had done this style on my hair, my hair is different from, you know, everyone else's hair. So I didn't know if it would take me, you know, longer or shorter, but I wanted to give myself enough time to get used to doing the style on other people's hair.
My clients and I learned together. We learned how long it lasts, which is about a month and a half to two months. The maintenance, how much oil you need to put in your hair, which you really don't need that much. For some people you may, depending on how your scalp is. For others, you didn't have to oil it as much. You can shampoo these easier than you can with box braids because they don't weigh as much when water is added to them like with regular box braids because you have so much hair on your head once you add water to it it gets even more heavier and the drying process takes a little bit longer but with knotless it's not as heavy you can still kind of move around and the drying process can be anywhere from a you know a couple hours to maybe 24 I know with regular box braids, it took me like two days, two, three days to get those box braids to dry. The roots would be fine. It's the rest of the braids, depending on how long the box braids were. And I used to like my box braids down to my, to my hips. So long process. One of the obstacles that I faced was sizing them correctly. I had to custom the size of the parts for each client. I don't, I don't mean that in the sense of like small, medium, and large, but rather one person's medium is different from another person's due to their hair density.
What I mean by that is I may have to add an extra row or two to my clients who have fine hair versus my clients who have thicker hair. My thicker hair clients, I may have to subtract a row in order to make sure that it looks full, but it's not heavy. Because if it's one thing I absolutely despise is heavy braids. You can't do anything with heavy braids. They hurt your neck and they give you whiplash and nobody likes to get whiplash. It's the worst. For the ends, I dipped them into boiling hot water to seal them. This helps them to not unravel. You don't want unraveling braids.
And this is the finished look. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.